Singlehood in Jewish Orthodoxy, Textual Analysis of Israeli Television Programming. At 22% of Israel's Jewish population and a large part of Israeli government, Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews are a visible segment of the Israeli Jewish population. Given that America's entire Jewish population constitutes about 2% of the whole, and of that number, only 6% identify as ultra-Orthodox and 3% as Orthodox, this demographic is far less visible. Against this backdrop of unfamiliarity, Americans have been watching two popular Israeli television shows via streaming services. Srugim, literally knitted kipot or skull caps, and Shtizel, the family's last name, featuring characters in the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox communities, respectively. Each show's storylines highlight the desire in Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox circles to marry earlier rather than later. This may resonate less with Americans for whom the median age for marrying has been steadily rising. Cultural identity theory offers a lens through which to view this phenomenon in religious Jewish society. The purpose of this research is to expose and explore how these little seen cultures depict their focus on marriage. Among the scant studies which look at different aspects of Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox life, some attention has been given to dating attitudes among ultra-Orthodox women and towards sexuality of single Orthodox men, but none examine their attitudes on the pressure to marry or on how this is depicted on television. This research is important because it adds to cross-cultural understanding, which helps break down preconceptions. This research uses textual analysis to examine episodes from both Shtizel and Srugim, focusing on conversations the main characters have with others about their singlehood and about their religious community's attitudes towards marriage. In the United States, studies showing the age of marriage has risen do not include religion among their various factors, and studies on religion have looked at how it impacts choice of partner or whether or not to marry, but not when the couple marries. When religion was taken into account, Judaism was lumped together and its different streams were not looked at specifically. This matters because in some ultra-Orthodox communities, 20 is considered old. As I mentioned earlier, in religious Jewish communities, the reason for dating is to find a spouse, get married, and start a family. Matchmakers have a place, formal ones in ultra-Orthodox families, called Shad Khanim, and more often well-meaning friends, relatives, and acquaintances in Orthodox circles. Also important to note is that prior to marriage, touching is frowned upon. In Israel, for a number of reasons, the way religious are depicted as matured as uh, depicted on television has matured over the years, offering less two-dimensional portrayals. These shows, like the miniseries Unorthodox, gain interest in the U.S. because they show something audiences are not familiar with but can still relate to, since the essence of a good story is the storylines and emotions they evoke. Also worth noting is that cultural identity theory has to do both with how people group together and how they differentiate themselves from others. In both these shows, the communities the characters travel in are very close-knit. The first episodes of the season of both Srugim and Shtizel were chosen to serve as the basis of the study because each sets the stage for each series. In both, the viewer meets the main characters and learns about the places they are in their lives. The protagonists are all in their late 20s, living in different neighborhoods in Jerusalem. I and another coder classify dialogue into one of six themes, matchmaker, dating, singlehood, engagement, marriage, and children, and as positively or negatively framed. Discussions were, differences were discussed, portions were rewatched if needed, and recoded to reach agreement and resolve differences. Intercoder reliability was determined. Because the streaming platforms do not divulge numbers of viewers or rankings, it is difficult to know how many Americans, especially non-Jewish, have watched either. It is worth, worth noting that a number of the viewers who reviewed Shrugim on Amazon's site or who, who reviewed Shtizel on IMDb 
stated they were not Jewish and that this lack of familiarity with Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox Judaism added to their interest in the show. Together, the two Israeli shows provide American view viewing audiences the opportunity to learn about both the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox ultra Jewish communities. Srugim's main characters, all single Orthodox Jews, live in a neighborhood in Jerusalem nicknamed the Swamp. Ifat, a graphic artist, shares the apartment she inherited from her grandmother with her best friend Hodaya, a college student. Their other close girlfriend, Reut, is an accountant. The other two who are the focus of the series are Nati, a medical intern, and his friend Amir, a grammar teacher. In the first episode, Reut breaks it off with her boyfriend of five months after he proposes marriage. Hodaya has two dates with someone she knew from Scouts back when they were 14, but who does not remember her. Ifat runs into Nazi at a speed dating event for religious singles, and Amir, who was recently divorced, moves in with Nazi. The Friday night Shabbat dinner scene towards the end of the first uh, episode is the first time that the five characters, all in their late 20s, are brought together. The other show centers on the Shtizel family, particularly Akiva, the 24-year-old son who lives with his widowed father, Shulam. Shulam is the head of a religious boys' school where Akiva, who enjoys drawing and has talent, is now filling in for a teacher who is ill. Other family members include Akiva's grandmother, Malka, as well as his brother, Tzvi Arie, and his sister, Giti, both married with children. In the first episode, Akiva goes on a date set up by a professional matchmaker and also meets someone he would like to date. His father, a widow, has lunch with Eliza, a, a woman he works with. The specific characters in the two series ground how the shows approach the topic of dating and religion. The Torah's first positive commandment to the Jewish people is to have children. This requires marrying early. For many religious Jews, then, dating is a means to an end, which is demonstrated in both shows. In Srugim, the young man that Ifat has just met at a speed dating event at a cafe asks her if she plans to cover her hair after marriage, as religiously observant women do. In Shtizel, Akiva is asked by the girl he meets for the first time on an arranged date, Batya, what his plans are for later should the two of them get married. This focus on marriage on first dates is not atypical, nor is the use of professional matchmakers, Shadchanim. Akiva and Batya met because the Shah Khan set them up. This meeting took place in a hotel lobby, a popular place for dates among ultra-Orthodox who use Shah Khanim far more frequently than Orthodox do. There they can sit and drink water or tea in a safe public setting. Another aspect of Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox dating that American audiences are not familiar with is the modesty and chasteness of their dating. In addition to the concept of Shomer Negiya, guarding against touch, if an unrelated man and women are together alone, they will leave a door open. Shulam does this when he eats lunch at Elise's home. Both Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox families want their children to marry sooner rather than later. While Akiva is out, his sister visits their father. She asks where Akiva is. And Shulam replies that he is on a date with, quote, a nice girl from a nice home. I hope he doesn't blow it. Later on, Shulam informs 24-year-old Akiva that the Shadchan let him know that Batya's family doesn't want him and wants to know what Akiva did on the date. Akiva changes the topic to tell him about a fictive matchmaker from another town who wants to set him up with a 30-year-old widow with a son. This woman, Elisheva, is actually the mother of one of his students. Akiva is interested in Elisheva, but presents it to his father as if a matchmaker is behind the two meeting, as this is more acceptable. In Srugim, Nati tells Ifat that his mother signed him up for speed dating, explaining she's uptight, excuse me, she's uptight about me not getting married. Later on in the episode, after her mother asks her guests, asks about her guests for Friday night Shabbat dinner, Ifat replies, Mom, when there's someone, you'll be the first to know, okay? Her annoyance at the pressure is short-lived since her next words are, really? You dreamt I had a boyfriend? What did he look like? The characters do not seek prolonged singlehood. They seek the right person. This isn't always the case. Uh, there's one sect which views marriage as more of a transaction between families and the couple has no say. 
For the characters in Srugim and Shtizel, though, their preferences matter. Akiva sabota sabotaged the date he was on with Batya. After she made light of his drawings, he told her that if it, they got married, his father would have to live with them forever. This was untrue. On the other hand, Elisheva appreciated Akiva's drawings when they happened to meet at the zoo. Later on at school, he asked Yisrael, Elisheva's son, where his mother worked. Akiva went to the bank where she worked under the pretense of being a customer and then invited her to meet in a hotel lobby that night. In Srugim, the reason Reut breaks it off with her boyfriend, Micha, after he proposes is because she sees him as insecure and she does not want that in a partner. He waited until he was promoted at work and earning more than her before he asked her to marry him. When she runs into him on her way to Ifatz for Shabbat dinner, Micha says that Reut must be glad to get what she wanted, to be alone on a Friday night. She replies that she'd rather be going alone to friends on Shabbat than to be with someone like him. In another example, when Ifat and Nati talk after they leave the speed dating event, he says to her that I think I'd be better off if my parents had married me off at 18. When Ifat questions why, he answers, I could have been married 12, 12 years by now. Ifat wants to know if he believes in the idea of someone being the one. He does, he said, but he does not want to wait another decade before finding her. Yet he has spent these years hoping to meet the right person. This study's use of the most prominent conversations between characters regarding dating and marriage served as a way to explore how both Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox view the purpose of dating and how this value of marriage was shared by parents and children. It also acknowledged that finding the right one is not something that comes overnight. Both Srugim and Shtizel represent segments of the Jewish people that most Americans are not familiar with. Their availability on Netflix and Amazon Prime offers Americans an opportunity to get to know the populations and to learn about how their dating habits differ from the American mainstream. The purpose of this study was to explore how these Israeli shows make accessible to American audiences aspects of Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Judaism that are not well known in the United States. That is how they chastely and purposefully date in order to find a spouse and how they emphasize marrying sooner rather than later. The study's strength lies in its exploratory nature. The research does not seek to compare and contrast the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox worlds, but find a way to join them together to present a picture that aid American audiences to understand cultural groups and values that exist in this country, albeit in small numbers. Its weakness is that, as with all stories, these are singular stories and may not represent all Orthodox friends or all ultra-Orthodox Jewish families. Further, the shows are produced in Israel and so some references may not make sense for American audiences and some nuance may be lost in translation. The absence of hard data about viewership means that this research is also limited in its ability to, to describe how much of the American viewing public has already learned about Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews and how they perceive the importance of dating. The American version of Shtizel being planned by Amazon Prime will take place in Brooklyn. Given the differences among the communities that make up the ultra-Orthodox world and differences between Jewish as well as secular communities in Israel and America, it would make sense for future research to examine how the topics of singlehood, dating, and marriage would be portrayed on that version of the show. Another avenue for future research would be an exploration of how American audiences, both Jewish and non-Jewish, interpret and understand the dating habits of Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews after having viewed Srugim and Shtizel. Does it make them see their own dating habits in a different light? And these were my references. Thank you very much.